Okay, this is the review for the final ex for the fall final exam. First off, on these, this is order of operations. So if I do this without the calculator, what I'm going to do go through first, order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, exponents, stuff like that. Right here in this parentheses, 8 minus 6. This right here is 2. So now I have 10 squared minus 3 times 2. Parentheses, exponents. 10 squared, 10 times 10, 100, <laughs> minus 3 times 2, 100, minus 6. The answer should be 94. Now, you can also just go in the calculator and put it in there. Where, oh, let's see here. I go 10 squared minus 3 times 8 minus 6, and press enter. Next one, right here. If I go through and uh, just do it without the calculator, parentheses, 8 minus 4, this is 4. 15 minus 8, this is 7. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 6 times 7 is 42, all divided by 3. 12 plus 42, 54, divided by 3. 54 by 3, oh, what is that? 1, 18. Okay. If you go and put it in the calculator, you need to be very careful because you can't put it all in there at one time because of the divide by three. When I go up here, I'm going to put the top part in the calculator first. I'm going to go three, parentheses, eight minus four, plus six, parentheses, 15 minus eight, and then press enter. I'm going to get the 54. Then you need, need to do 54 divided by 3, and that's where the 18 comes from. Number three, this one has to do with algebra tiles. First off, remember these little ones right here, these are units, and these are x's. There's negative 4 units, so this is negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 4x. Or you could write it as 4x minus 4. These don't cancel out because they're not the same shape. They're totally different. Units stay separate, separate than, the x, than the x's. That's as simple as you can do it. The next one, it says simplify the tiles. Well, I see that a positive is going to take away a negative. They're the same size, same shape. So those take away each other, and then I have a positive x takes away a negative x. Negative unit and a positive unit. I don't see any more zero pairs anywhere to eliminate. What I do see is, let me find the x's. I've got two positive x's and two negative units, so it's minus 2. This is as simple as you can do it. Putting the x's together and the units together. The next one, it says solve for x. Now, for some of you, it might be easier. 3 fourths is 0.75. You could rewrite it like this and then just divide by 0.75 to get your answer. So if I go here and take 6 divided by... Point seventy five. It'll give me eight. Now, if I, oops, I didn't mean to put it right there. Let's see. Okay. To do this by hand, well, not by hand, but with the uh, with the fractions here. To get rid of this fraction, you would multiply by the reciprocal, meaning flip it over. Four over three. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. 
These cancel out. This is 6 over 1. So here, 6 times 4 is 24. 3 times 1 is 3, which is 8. It, get, it comes up with the same answer. Next one. Here's the next one. Next. Right here, I'm going to put my x's together. And I get 4x plus 8 equals 28. Now I'll move the 8 to the other side. So I'll subtract 8 from each side. I get 4x equals 20. Then I will divide by 4. x equals 5. There's your answer right there. Next one, right here, you need to start with the distributive property. Okay, now on this one, we're going to do the distributive property. So you have to take 3 times 4x and 3 times 2. 3 times 4 is 12x. 3 times 2 is 6 equals 14. You're going to subtract 6 from each side. 12x equals 14 minus 6 is 8. Divide by 12. X equals 8 over 12, but you can reduce that. Okay? To remind you how to do it in the calculator, take 8, divide 12, press math right here underneath the alpha, math, enter, enter. It'll reduce it to two-thirds, which makes sense because 4 goes into both of those. So this becomes two-thirds. Number eight, you're going to do your parentheses, but remember, a lot of people mess up and they try and put these two together and make it seven first. You can't do that. That three stays separate, and then you have four times x, which is four x, four times two, which is eight, equals 19. The question was, why can't you combine the 3 and the 4? That's because they're being added right here. And in order of operations, you have to do parentheses first, which would mean this 4 is right outside the parentheses, and you have to do that multiplying first. Okay? So now when we have this, now I'm going to put my numbers together right here. 4x plus 11 equals 19. Subtract 11 from each side. And I get 4x equals 8. I'm going to divide by 4. x equals 2. Number 9. Okay. There's x's on, on two different sides. When we were doing the inequality unit, I always said to move the x's to the left because it was easier with graphing. When we're solving equations, it doesn't really make a difference which way we do it. I'm going to move my x's over here to the right. And to do that, I have to add 5x to each side. 54 equals 9x. Divide by 9. x equals 6. Or 6 equals x. It means the same thing. Number 10. It says, what are the x and the y intercepts of the function graph below? You need to remember this is the x, this is the y. So if we do the y-intercept first, oh, let's see here. Here's the y. My y-intercept is right here. It is 0, 2. Did I miss number 10? Okay, I'll be back to it in just a second. Let's just keep going through with number 11. Right here, here's my x. It goes this way. My x-intercept is right here, which is 1, 2, 3, which is 3, 0. Yes, sir. Ah, that's a good point. It is 0, negative 2 right there. You're right. 
Okay, so zero, negative two makes a big difference. Let's see if I have 10 in here somewhere and I just didn't see it. Well, what was number 10? Let's see, I probably skipped it when I was trying to make the file. Let's see, number 10. Okay, number 10 says, Don took two equations, y equals negative x plus 6, and y equals 2x minus 9, and set them equal to each other. So it was negative x plus 6 equals 2x minus 9. This is what's on your paper. It says, what is the value of x? Okay, so all they did was they set these two things right here equal to each other, right? And they want us to find x. So we're going to move our x's over here to the, the two x's over here to the left. So I'm going to subtract 2x from each side. I get negative 3x plus 6 equals negative 9. I'm going to subtract 6 from each side. Negative 3x equals negative 15. Then we're going to divide by negative 3. X equals 5. Number 12 says, what is the slope of this line? Slope of the line. From left to right, first thing you want to look at if, if your answers are multiple choice, is my slope going to be positive or negative? It's going to be positive because from left to right, the line is going up. Okay? So now I'm going to start. I normally start at the y-intercept. You don't always have to start there, but that's where I do. And I'm going to go up one and to the right one. Is that on the line yet? No. I need to go up one and to the right two. Let's see if that works again. Up one to the right two. Up one to the right two. Yes, it does. Up one to the right two. My slope is one half. Well, did I go backwards? Try again. There we go. 13 says, what is the y-intercept? Remember, y-intercept is the same as the constant when we find the equation. We know my y-intercept is going to be 0 and some number. So to go through and find this, we need to find the equation of the line. So I'm going to do delta y. The change in y is plus 4. Delta x is plus 1. Delta y over delta x, 4 over 1 is 4. So I have 4 times 1. 4 times 1 is 4. What do you have to add or subtract to 4 to get to 2? You need to subtract 2. So my equation becomes y equals 4x minus 2. Minus 2 is my y-intercept, so it's 0, negative 2. Number 14, roses cost 25 cents each plus $1.50 for shipping. Write the equation. I have y equals mx plus b. Remember, m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. Okay, well, the y-intercept is a one-time charge. Which one of these things am I paying for one time? I'm paying 150 one time. That's the shipping. So that means my 25 cents each is going to go right here for my slope. So my equation becomes y equals 0.25x plus $1.50. That's your equation. The next one, oh, there's 10. It was way over. We already did this one. I guess I just had it in a different order. Number 15, graph this line. We'll plot the y-intercept at negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put a dot there. 
The slope is 2. 2 over 1. That tells me to go up 2 to the right 1. So I come here and I go up 2 to the right 1 and put a dot. Up 2 to the right 1 and put a dot. Up 2 to the right 1 and put a dot. Okay? Make sure you put at least three points when you're graphing your line so that you can get a good line. And then you draw your line. Now, let me ask you this question because of the units we've just done prior to this review. Do I need to shade anything? I don't shade anything. This is an, this is an equation. This is just a line. It's not a greater than or a less than. So remember, when it's an equation, all I do is graph the line. The next one, okay, which function below will have the steepest graph? What does steep mean? Is it more vertical or horizontal? It's more vertical. You're looking for the line that is closer to being a, you're looking for the line that is closest to being vertical. The more vertical it is, the steeper it is. The negatives have nothing to do with the steepness. The positive and negatives of the slopes tell me direction, okay? So the only numbers I need to worry about are the one-half, the four, the one-fourth, and the three. The larger the number, oh, my little highlights want to just not work here. All right. So the steeper the line, the larger the slope. And the larger number, not worrying about positives and negatives, is B, is 4. Number 17, we've got another order of operation problem. Okay, so I'm going to go to parentheses. 5 minus 1, that's 4. Um, parentheses, exponents, no exponents. Multiplication, division. I'm going to go up here next and do 18 to minus 2, which becomes 16. 16 divided by 4 is 4, plus 8 times 4 is 32. Your answer should be 36. Number 18, which of the following is not true about the line graph below? Well, first it says the graph shows an increasing function. Well, from left to right, the line is going up. It's increasing. This is true. It says the y-intercept is 0, negative 1. Is that the y-intercept? No. That one's, this one's false. It says the x-intercept is negative 1, 0. Yep, it's right there. This one's true. Okay, and then it has your equation, and this one is true as well. Your answer should have been B. Number 19 again, which of the following is not true about the line graph? The graph shows a decreasing function. Wait a minute. This line right here. Whoops. There we go. Is that line increasing or decreasing? What type of line is that? It's a horizontal line. That A horizontal line is not increasing and it's not decreasing. This is false. It says the x-intercept is 0, negative 3. Sure enough is. The x, the y, I say the x-intercept is none. Does it cross the x-axis? No, so this is true. The equation is y equals negative 3. This is true. Your answer should be A. Number 20. How would the graph of y equals x be affected if it was changed to 1 half x plus 6? Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. What is this equation called? It is the linear 
parent function. Just as a reminder, because I know that we'll probably see it on the EOC, remember that the linear parent function, if you remember that's y equals x, make sure that you can see the graphs. So put in there y equals x and press graph. It is increasing, it goes up, it's going up like that, it goes through 0, 0. Is it proportional? What does proportional mean? Proportional means it goes through 0, 0. Does it go through 0, 0? Yeah, it does. Okay, that's just a reminder on linear parent function. Now, if it says how were it, was it, would it be changed if we had, let's see, let me go in here and put in there 1 8 x plus 6. Now, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to darken, if you go to the left a couple times, see how it's blinking over there by the y? If I press enter one time, it'll darken the line so it'll be easier to see. So I press graph. There's my linear parent function. There's the next one. Now, how, how does it change it? First off, how does the 6 change it? That plus 6 does what? It shifts it up 6 units. What does the 1 8 do to it? Does it make it steeper or flatter? It makes it flatter. Okay, so right here, let's see if I can get rid of it. There we go. Okay, so it is shifted up six units. And it is flatter. Or you can write, it may say less steep. Okay, you could see either one of those vocabulary words. Flatter or less steep. Number 21. If I move the page, there we go. So take a minute and try and figure out how this one would be affected by the linear parent function. What would happen? Okay, on this next one, we start off, we have the linear parent function. And the equation this time is 3x minus 5. And I press graph. There's the linear parent function. The next one I notice, so here I'm looking at it. And the first thing I notice is that the y-intercept is shifted down. That's down 5 units. The other thing I notice is that the line is steeper. Okay, it's going up more. Well, that makes sense because of the, looking at the slopes. So first off, what I see is that this minus 5 right here means that it is shifted down 5 units. The other thing is this y-intercept, or not y-intercept, that slope is 1. 3 is larger than 1, so that means that the new line is steeper. Because remember, the larger the number, the steeper the line, the larger the slope. Next one, it says, underline the dependent variable and circle the independent. Independent remembers the thing that happens first. The dependent variable is the result or what happens second. It says, what type of car I get is a function of how much money I make. The first thing you have to do is make the money. So the independent variable is making the money. The dependent is going to be the type of car you get. Your fourth period class determines your lunch schedule. What happens first? Do you pick your lunch first or do you get your schedule? Or do you get your class period? You get your class period first. So the class period is the independent. Sorry, that's supposed to be circled. Dependent variable is your lunch. So once you know what your fourth period class is, then you get your lunch schedule. Next one. A carpet cleaning company charges $2 for every square yard the carpet is clean, plus a fee of $42.
Write an equation for the charge, C, in terms of the number of square yards, N. Well, the total charge equals, you pay $2 for every square yard, which is N, they're telling us to use N, plus the one-time fee is the carpet cleaned, um, let's see, carpet cleaned plus a fee of $42. $42 is what you pay for one time. That's your constant. So 42 is my y-intercept or my constant. Just to remind you, so I can write that this is the constant. It's also called the y-intercept. This 2 right here is a slope, or we can call it the, co the coefficient. Now, it says, what is the dependent variable? Remember, dependent is the same as the y. If I use x and y right here, I'd have y, and an x would go right here. y matches up with the c. The C is the charge, so the dependent variable is the, the dependent variable would be C, which rep, represents the charge. Or I should say the total charge. But it asks you for the variable, which is C. 24. The amount that a video repairman charges for his service is based on the number of hours he works. He uses the formula C equals 13 plus 18H, where C represents the total charge and A represents the number of hours worked. What is the independent variable? Independent is your X. If I went and put X and Y in here, this is where the Y would be. This is the X. The X matches up with the H. So it would be H, which represents number of hours worked. Number 25, it says, tell whether or not the data represents a function or not. Oh, my goodness. Do you guys remember what a function means? Something cannot repeat. What can't repeat? The X numbers cannot repeat. I'm telling you, this has been on the EOC. It's something that people tend to forget, and it, you will see it again and again. So right here it says, tell whether or not the data represents a function, yes or no, and say why. Well, there's my X, there's my X, there's my X. Do the Ys matter? No, the Ys are like my ex-boyfriends. They don't matter. Duh. All right, anyway. This one, yes, it is a function. Letter B. The X numbers right here, do any of those repeat? Yep, those Ys don't matter, so yes, this is a function. Okay, what about these Ys? Do any of them repeat? Yeah, these negative ones do. Since those repeat, this is not a function. Now, this one, sometimes people get confused because of the arrows. What might be easier is if you write them as ordered pairs. This is... 1, 4, 1, 5, 2, 6, and 3, 7. Well, the X numbers are right here. Do any of them repeat? The 1's repeat, yeah, so this is not a function. Now, there was another thing we did besides looking at the X numbers. If you looked at a graph, do you remember what it was that we figured out if it was a function or not? It was a something something test. A something, say it again. It was. It was the vertical line test. So if I draw a vertical line right here and it crosses in more than one spot, this is not a function. Here, when I draw my vertical line, it crosses once, crosses once, and that's okay. So, yes, this is a function. Okay, now this says, what is the domain of the function when they give you the range? First off, you should underline domain and put X, underline range and put Y. 
Now, I told you before, the easiest way to go through and do that is to make a table, put X and Y, because you want to make sure you look in the right spot. We want to find the X's when the Y's are 0, 6, and 11. Okay, so you're going to be looking in the Y column. So we're going to go to the calculator, and i got to clear out what's in my Y equals. And I have, what was the equation here? Oh, oh, don't make that big. There we go. I have 1 half x plus 1. Now I'm going to press second graph. And you're going to look and see where, let's go back over here, where y is 0. y is 0, x is negative 2. So you're going to put a negative 2 right here. You're going to look and see where x is 6. So I'm going to go down here to find where x is 6. y is 10. Now I'm sorry. I said that backwards, didn't I? I'm looking to see where y is 6. y is 6 right here. x is 10. Puts it there. Now I look and see where y is 11. Make sure you're looking in the correct column. y is 11. X is 20. So now when I go to write, I'm going to have that my domain is, and I use my set notation, negative 2, 10, and 20. Number 27. This time it says what is the range. Range is Y. When the domain, when when the X numbers are negative 1, 0, and 1. So if I draw my table, X and Y, it says domain, says X is negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay? So I'm going to go to the calculator. I am going to put in there 2X. I think it's minus 1, isn't it? Yeah. Minus 1, second graph. I'm going to look and see where x is negative 1. Well, let me go quickly. Second window, negative 1. You can just scroll through the table, but this is a quicker way. x is negative 1. y is negative 3. x is 0. y is negative 1. x is 1. y is 1. So now as I go to write it in my set notation, I have the range equals negative 3, negative 1, and 1. Number 28. A rental company charges a flat monthly rate, very important, flat monthly rate of $25 a day, plus 10 cents per mile. How many miles did Linda drive if her total bill was $65? Okay. Did I miss another part to that question, or is that all it said? Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to write the equation. Now, if you think about it, we've got X and Y. X is the number of miles... And Y is going to be her total bill. So, for example, at before she ever drives, how much does she have to pay to rent the car? $25. If she drives one mile, that's $0.10. Cents, so it's 25.10. Two miles, 25.20. cents. So $25.20. What am I increasing by each time? 0.1 or 10 cents. So my equation is going to be y equals 0.10x plus 25. The 25 is my constant. The 10 is my coefficient. Now it says how many miles did Linda drive if her total bill was $65? So you will put 65 in here where y is. And you will solve for X.
from here after you set up the equation, it asked how many miles um, did she drive. So you'll have to solve for x, which means you subtract 25 from each side, which gives us 40 equals 0.10x. You'll divide by 0.10 to both sides. X equals, I believe, is that 400? Which would be in the home screen. 40 divided by 0.10. Yep, 400. Number 29, it says a table shows that the weight of the box of oranges depends on the number of oranges in the box. Okay, so remember that Y depends on X. It says the weight of the box depends on, so the weight is the Y. The number of oranges is the X. So I have X and Y. It says, what is the weight in ounces per orange? Okay, so what I need to do is I need to find the equation because the weight, the weight, oh, let's see, for each per orange. Sometimes it's hard for me to see the tables when they're written like this. So I'm going to turn it around where we're used to writing our equations. And right here, I've got my number of oranges, and I've got the weight. I've got 5 and 27, 10 and 42. So I'll just start with those two right here. Delta Y, the change in Y. Right here, remember, take 42 minus 27. You can put that in your calculator. That's 15. Delta X is 5. So I take 15 divided by 5, which is 3. 3 goes in there. That's my slope times my X. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 plus what? Okay, to get your Y intercept gives you 27. 15 plus, uh, what is that, 12? All right, so my equation becomes y equals 3x plus 12. This right here is the weight of the, this is the weight per orange. This is where weight per orange. This number right here, this constant, the one-time charge, if it was in a box, this would be the weight of the box. The next one, number 30, it says the cost in dollars of an overseas call depends on the number of minutes, M, and is determined by the formula. It gives us this equation. How much would a 50-minute call cost? Well, the cost equals 5 plus $1.20 times the number of minutes. We've get, we're going to take it times 50 minutes. So now I'm going to come in here in my handy dandy calculator. I've got 5 plus $1.20 times 50. 65. So the call would be $65. Number 31. The table below shows the amount that the senior class paid for t-shirts they sold. Write an equation for the cost in terms of the number of t-shirts. Well, we've got X and we've got Y, but again, I don't like trying to figure out my equations when it's written that way, so I'm going to turn it the other way. I'm going to have 10 and 70, 20 and 120. Well, delta Y, the change in Y right here is plus 50. Delta X is plus 10. So I have 50 divided by 10, which is 5. Y equals 5X. Let's see. I guess I need to expand my table a little bit more so I can get have room. I'll use the 10 and 70. 
The coefficient goes right here, the 5. I have 5 times 10, which is 50. What do you have to add to 50 to get to 70? Plus 20. So then it's 5x plus 20. That's my equations. It says how many shirts were purchased for $237? You need to see that y is the cost, so you're going to look where y is 237. Now you could, this is the way you can do it in the calculator. We can go in the calculator and put in there 5x plus 20. And go second graph. And look and find where y is $237. Which there's not a quick way. You just have to scroll through finding your numbers in the y column. Oh, let's see if it, there we go. Now, right here, 237. Is there an, an exact 237? It's, you've got right here at 235, that's 43 shirts. But if you only have 237, you only have 237 shirts, can you buy 44 shirts? Do you have enough money? No. So it's got to be the most you can get is 43 shirts. Then it says, what is the total cost? For 650 shirts. Well, you can go over here and take 5 times 650 plus 20. This is one way you can do it. You can also look through the table and go to see where X is um, 650. I'll go through. I'll do that in a minute. So I go here. And I take 5 times 650 plus 20. Press enter. So it would be 3,270. 3,000, trying to write with the mouse, 270. Okay. The way you can do it in the calculator, you can scroll through and keep pressing the down arrow to get to um, 650. Or you can go second window, type in 650, second graph, and it will take you right there. To go back to zero, second window, put in there zero, second graph. We couldn't do that with the with letter B because you can't do that to find the Y the Y answers. It only works with the X. Number thirty-two. We're solving equations. Like on the first one, when you've got X's on both sides, I'm moving this five X over here to the left, so I've got to subtract five X from each side. So I have 4x minus 5x, which is negative 1x minus 3. These cancel, equals 6. I add 3 to each side. Negative 1x equals 9. Divide by negative 1. x equals negative 9. Up here on letter B. Normally, I like to move my x's to the left, especially when we dealt with inequalities. But right now, with it, when it's just equations, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to move this 5x over here to the right. But to move it over there, you just can't put it over there. You have to do the opposite. And you have to add 5x to each side. I get 54 equals 9x. I'm going to divide by 9. 6 equals x. Or you can write it, x equals 6 means the same thing. Number 33, for some reason this really messed people up and I couldn't figure out why. First off, what does it mean when we talk about perimeter? What are they telling you to do? Add, the, add all sides. Okay. So if this side right here is x plus 1, so is the opposite side. Now this one, I'm going to go ahead and do the distributive property. So I have 2x plus 2. That's the same as this right here. So 
That means the bottom one is 2x plus 2. I've, I'm going to add up all my x's. 2x and 2x is 4x, 5, and 6. So my perimeter is 6x. And then add your units. 2 plus 2 is 4, 5, and 6 plus 6. That's all, that's all you can do. It didn't tell you what the perimeter was. It says to um, find it in terms of x. 34 again, it asks you to find the perimeter. So you need to add up all the sides. Add up all the x's. 3, 4, 5. Let's see, that's 5x, 10x, 15x, 17x. Add up your number, your just your regular numbers. 2, and that's 4, 8, minus 1 is 7. Minus 1 is 6. So it's 17x plus 6 equals the perimeter. Number 35. Brenda walks dogs to earn money to buy a car. She charges $3 per dog and a service fee of $10 a session. The equation for her earnings, it gives us the equation right here, where x represents the number of dogs to be walked and y is your total earnings. What does the slope represent in this problem? First off, the slope is the 3. You need to recognize that. Well, it tells it right here. It's what she charges per dog. So how much she charges for each dog? It should be B. Total earnings? Total earnings would be the Y. This would be the total earnings. Initial service fee, that's the 10. The number of dogs she walks, that's the X. Okay, Bobby wants to earn money for her prom dress, so she babysits her neighbor. She charges $5 per hour and $20 as her initial salary. The equation for her savings is Y equals 5X plus 20 where X represents the number of hours she babysits and Y is her total earnings. What does the Y-intercept represent in the problem? Well, the first thing you need to recognize is that the Y-intercept is right here. It's the 20. It says right here, 20 as her initial salary. That's the Y-intercept. Initial salary, that's the 20. That's the answer you're looking for. Now, the total earnings, that would be Y. Y is the total earnings. Number of hours she babysits. It says that X is the number of hours she babysits. So that right here, this is the X. How much she charges per hour? That's my five. That's my slope. Number 37. The graph shown represents books read by a student who reads at a rate of three books per month. Which of the following graphs represent the number of books read by a student who reads at four books per month? Now, this right here is saying that the rate is three books per month, and they want to increase it to four books per month. What happens to my line? Is it going to become steeper or flatter? The larger the number, the steeper the line. It's going to become steeper. Because that 3 and that 4 to rate, that's your slope. First off, looking at it, I can already tell B is not steeper. B cannot be that answer. So now I'm going to look. Letter A is going up 1, 2, up 2, and to the right 1. Up 2 to the right 1. This has a slope of 2. This is 2 books per month. C is 1, 2, 3, 4. Up 4 to the right 1. Up for the right one. This is a slow, this is a rate of four books per month. So we have C. The next one, which is 38. Take a minute and do that. All right. Joey borrowed $1,400 from his brother. Ooh, I want that brother. Okay. To buy a fishing boat. Each month he pays his brother $20 towards the loan. Okay. So it gave us the equation. 
where X is the number of months Joey has been paying the bill, the loan back, and Y is the total, the amount still owed. Whoa, didn't mean to mark that. What is the meaning of the Y-intercept? Okay. Okay, well, I can't read. It says X-intercept. Beautiful. All right. So the X-intercept. Well, golly gee willikers. Let's see what's happening. X is the number of months. And the Y is the amount still owed. Okay? So at the beginning, at time zero, how much does he owe? 1400 So as the line goes down and it hits down here on the X-intercept, what does that point mean? This, yeah, the X-intercept is going to be the number of months when it's paid off. The amount of money Owie, Owie, Owie owns. Wow. Joey owns his brother. Wow. Okay. Joey owes his brother. No. The initial amount Joey borrowed. What's the initial amount? That's the what? It's $1,400, but it's called the what? Y intercept. So it's not this one. The, the initial amount owed is this right here, the Y intercept. The num. Wait, the amount of money Jamie owes? No. The number of months it takes to pay off the loan? Yes, the answer should be D. 39. Which of the following can be concluded from the graph below? There is no correlation, correlation, oh my goodness, correlation between the number of cars built and the number of workers. Hey, what's the correlation going on right here? It's positive. It's increasing. It's going up. So there is a correlation. It says there's a positive correlation. Yeah, buddy. Because it's going up. Okay. Hello. There we go. All right. A local zoo opened in 1970. The cost of admission has changed over time. And it shows the table. Now it says which is the best which of the following best represents the trend line for the data above. Trend line, does that mean that it's going to be the exact points? If it's a trend line, can I do delta y over delta x? No, trend lines when you put in all those points and it's an average. So let's go in there first. Let's see if we remember how to put them in there. So if I go in, I'm going to press stat and enter. Okay, so in L1, I'm going to put the year since the zoo opened. So I've got 5, 10, 12, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Now I'm going to go over to my Y. Admission cost. So we've got 250, 2.5, 3.75, 4, 5.25, 6, 7.25, and 8.75. Now, oh, enter. Make sure, remember, make sure these are the even amounts. Okay, that they go together. Now, when I press graph, I don't see anything. What do I need to do to make my points show up on the graph? I got to change my stat plot first. Go to Y equals. Go up to plot one. Some of you guys are like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Press enter. Press graph. Well, I only see one of them right here, or two, one and a half. All right, so let's go to our window settings. The smallest X number I have is five, so I'm going to put in there a zero. The largest X number, it goes up to 30, so I can go up to 31. doesn't really matter. I'll still go by ones. 
Y minimum, the smallest Y number is 250. I'll start at zero. And then I'm going to go up. I'm going to leave it at 10 because it's 875. Now when I press graph, there's my trend. What kind of trend is it? Positive. So now we're going to test and see which one of these works for us. So I'm going to go to Y equals. I'm going to put in there 5 divide 2, X minus 10, and press graph. Oh, oh, that doesn't work. Nope, nope. Not A. Try again. 5 divide 4, X minus 5. Graph. Oh, that's yucky too. Okay. How about one half x? Well, you're being negative, Nelly. It's not going to work, but it's not going to work. So let's hope the next one does. One divide four plus one. Looking through, does it go through the average of the points? Yes, it sure does. So your answer is D. Okay. Hopefully, we're going to remember those steps. Next one. This one says, which of the following would be a reasonable estimate for the admission to the zoo after 35 years? Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to use this equation we just came up with, okay, that we just got, and it says for 35 years. So when I go to the table, you'll arrow down to 35 or... We'll press second window and put in there 35. Second graph. It'll be 975. Right here. 975. 42. Now it says about how many years after the zoo opened will you expect to pay $16? Nine seventy-five was the last problem. Now this one at sixteen dollars. I'll go down here to where y is sixteen. There it is. How many years is that? Sixty. That's a long time. Okay. Number forty-two. 43. Which of the following situations can the function y equals 3x plus 40 be applied? Okay, when you're looking at these, you need to remember that this 40 has to be a one-time charge. This 3 is something that happens each time. Okay? N the number of pennies in a jar, if there are 40 pennies and each person removes five of them. Well, why can it not be this one? What is removing five going to do to it? Subtract. It would be 40 minus 5x. So it's not A. Jake, Jake's, Jake, Jack's earnings if he makes $40 in tips and $3 per hour. So he makes $40 plus $3 per hour. But let's see what these other ones would have. The total number of hours Tim works if he charges $40 an hour. Oh, it's not that one because that would be 40X. Three shirts cost $40. 3X. No. Yes, 3X equals 40. No way. So the answer is B. Forty-four. Ooh, domain and range right here on this inequality part. Some of you guys are really going to mess this up. All right. Remember, domain is the X. Okay? X is down here. The first thing I always go through and do is look and see, are there any answer choices there that have Y? Yes, there is A. A is not right. Okay, the other ones have X. So let's see. X starts here at zero, and what does it go all the way out to? Seven. So it goes from zero to seven. Your answer should be C. The range, 
range is the y. Automatically, I can cross out b because it says x. Now, the y, I'm looking right here. It's starting here at 0, and it's going all the way up to what number? Up to 100. So it's 0 to 100. You should get a. Forty six and forty seven. Circle the independent variable and underline the dependent. Remember, independent is your x, it's what happens first. Dependent is the y, it's the result or what happens second. Okay. The number of hours you work determines the amount of your paycheck. What do you have to do first? You have to work, so number of hours work. So you're going to circle the independent. That's what happens first, and underline the dependent. Then you get paid. The cost of running a car depends on the amount of miles you drive. You're going to drive it first, and then you end up going back and paying the whole bill. So that's the dependent right there. All right, number 48. Number 48, sorry. Okay, it says the graph below records the number of leaves that have sprouted on Dahlia's tomato plant. Which of the following can be concluded from the data above? It says that when Dahlia started recording the data, the plant had two leaves. Okay, well, when she's starting it, that's going to be your y-intercept. Here's my y-intercept. What, about what point does that look like it is? Each one of these lines looks like it's going by 5. So it looks like it's about 6. That would be 0, 6. That would mean it have about 6 leaves. So it's not A. The plant is growing at a rate of four leaves for every five days. Well, I'm going up five days. I'm No, no, no. I'm going up, ten, up to ten. Ten leaves over two days. Ten leaves over two days. How many leaves is that per day? That's five leaves per day. So, and it says four leaves for every five days. No, because here's five days somewhere over here. And we're all the way up here above 15. It's not B. The time, there was T time period when the plant did not sprout any leaves. Well, this line is increasing the entire time. It does continue to, make, to um, get leaves. Then it says after 12 days, days, the plant had 30 leaves. 12 days up here, that's at 30 leaves. So the answer is D. Circle any of the following that represents a linear function. How do you know when something's a function? Well, no, when the x does not repeat, that's when it's a function. When it's linear, delta y, oops, delta y over delta x has to be the same. Really, I was trying to erase. I was trying to erase and it didn't work. Delta y over delta x is supposed to be the same. So when we go through these tables, let me move some of these over here. Oh, hey, no, they're all together. Okay. Right here, delta y. This is plus 3 plus 12, oh, and minus 3, let's see, minus 1, minus 4, plus 1. This is 3 over negative 1, which is negative 3, 12 over negative 4, which is negative 3, oh, these are the same so far, negative 3 over 1 is negative 3. All of these are the same. So, yes, this one would be linear. They just don't have the points all written in the same order. That one is linear. I'll try this one over here. I'm going to take 6 minus 1, or 6, how do I get from 6 to negative 1? Okay, so you do delta y. 
Okay, so now going to the next one. Right here, it's negative 7 plus 3 plus 3. That's delta y. Delta x plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Negative 7, whoops, negative 7 over 1 is negative 7. 3 over 1 is 3. These are not the same. It is not linear. So let me go down here and try the next one down here. Delta y plus 1 minus 7 minus 1. That still doesn't have anything to do with, with it. You have to go over here. Delta x plus 1 minus 3 minus 1. I have 1 over 1, which is 1. Negative 7 over negative 3. Well, that's um, 2.5. These aren't already. I don't have to do any more. They're not going to work. It's not linear. Trying the next one. Trying the next one. We're going to do delta y, the change in y. Plus 1. Minus 1. Plus 1. Delta x plus 3, plus 7, plus 1. Well, this is 1 over 3 and 1 over 7. Those are not the same. It is not linear. Number 50. Which of the following best represents the equation containing the ordered pairs? Now, you could go through and you could build a table and put in there 1, 3, 2, 5, and 3, 7, and do delta y over delta x to find your equation. You can do it that way. I would tend to go over here and first go to my, my calculator, and, oh, let me clear it. Second plus sign, 7, 1, 2. I would go to y equals and put in there 2x plus 1 and second graph. Look in the table for these points. Well, there's 1, 3. Yes, what about 2, 5? 2, 5 is in there and 3, 7 is in there. I got lucky because my first answer choice is right there. When you put these other ones in there, those points are not going to be in there. So when I go, so for example, when I go in there and I put, if I put 2x plus 3, and I press not 13, and I press second graph. One, is it one three there? No, it's one five. So you put these other ones in there and they won't have it in there. So that's why my answer is A. The next one right here, well, there's a bunch of them. Um, the cost of installing a new phone line, uh, what is it, a phone line? They forgot the H, um, is $19.95 per month for basic service plus a $40 installation fee. They give us the equation right here. So they want us to complete the table. So one way is I go through here and I've got 19.95 times 2 plus 40. 19.95 plus or times 4 plus 40. 19.95 times 6 plus 40. 19.95 times 12 plus 40. I'll get those answers in there in a second. But then I have 19.95 times M plus 40. Okay, well, if I go on the calculator, the easiest way for me, I mean, you can put these in there and multiply, but I'm going to go to Y equals and put in there 19... 0.95 times oh, x plus 40. So second graph. I'll start off at 2 right here where x is 2, y is $79.90. $79.90. At 4, it's 19. 
Oh, where are you at? Come on now, my pin. What was it? 119.8. The next one I had was 6, which is 159.7. And then I had 12, which is 299, 299.35. What, 279? Can I not read? No. Oh, I'm on 13. Yeah, here we go. 279.40. Thank you. 279. Oh, golly. 279.40. What was in the red again? I'm sorry, what was it? 159.7. Okay. So now it says, what was the slope of the situation? The slope was 19.95. That's the same as the coefficient. The constant is 40. Remember, the, co uh, the constant is the same as the y-intercept. Now, it says, which of the following represents a reasonable domain? Domain is what letter, x or y? It is x. Domain is x. So I can cross out c and d. It says um, a reasonable domain, and it says from 1 to 4. Well, my table goes up higher than that. I'll go and I will say B, right here. What does this mean, this thing laying on its side? Infinity. Well, infinity and the same as all real numbers, it just keeps going up. Okay, now we have number 55. Okay, number 55, since rent a lot charges $50 a month to rent the TV plus a $25 credit check fee. So my equation is going to be Y equals $50 times a month plus 25. That's going to be my, my equation. Now your coefficient is the same as your slope, which is 50. To match your table right here, you can do one of a couple things. You can put this in the calculator and press second graph. So if I go here to the calculator, which disappeared on me, I guess I closed it out for some reason. Um, I have, I could go through and do it like this, X and Y. Right here it says X is 2. So for two months, I have 50 times 2, which is 100. 100 plus 25 is 125. That has 2 and 125. That says 2 and 150. That's not it. This one says 2 and 75. Nope. 2 and 100. Nope. So this would be the table that we would need to use. The next ones I have, it says solve and graph. Okay. Right here. Let's solve it. So treat it like an equation. I'm going to add 9 to each side. I get 3x is less than negative 6. I'm going to divide by 3. I get x is less than negative 2. So there is my inequality. Right here at negative 2, do you use an open dot or a closed dot? It does not say equal to, so it is an open circle. Less than is to the left. This is what it should look like when you graph. The next one, we'll do the same thing. I'm going to do the distributive property. So I have 2x minus 8 greater than 20. I'm going to add 8 to each side. I get 2x is greater than 28. I will divide by 2. X is greater than 14. So now when I graph it, I will use an open circle at 14. It's greater than, so I shade to the right. Number 50 says to graph on your own paper. If I went to sketch this, 
Oh, I'm going to try and use my straighter lines here. If I want to sketch this, here's my Y and my X. Let's see. Two, three, four, five, six. Just when you're sketching it, you could sketch it yourself just like this, just like I am. So I'll go to the Y intercept, which is four. One, two, three, four, and put a dot. The slope is one. That tells me to go up one and to the right one. So I start at the y-intercept and go up one to the right one and put a dot, up one to the right one and put a dot. Now I can connect my dots and draw my line. Now it's a solid line because it's equal to. It's less than, which means that you go to the y-intercept, draw a line down, that's the side you shave. Less than is below. 61 says, what type of boundary line do you use for this inequality? Boundary line means do you do a solid or a dashed? It does not have an equal to bar, so it means you use a dash. So again, for this boundary line, because it does not have an equal to bar, it is a dashed line meaning that you would go like this. Now, I just want to add to that, if it's less than, like if this was actually the line, if it was less than, you would shade below, which is down here. But the boundary lines only talk about dashed or solid. The next one said Cade has a mowing business. He charges $15 an hour plus $5 for, per gas. $5 for gas. How many hours would he have to work in order to earn at least $40. You have 15x, $15 per hour, plus $5 for the gas, at least is greater than or equal to 40. So now to solve this, I would subtract 5 from each side. I get 15x is greater than or equal to 35. I'm going to divide by 15. X is greater than or equal to, that's going to be, what is that, 35 divided by 5, it's 2.35 divided by 15, sorry, I was saying 5, 2.333, so if it has to be greater than, you have to round it up which would mean it would be three hours if he wants to earn more than $40.